Once upon a stressful week, I succumbed to peer pressure and bought The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. That same day, I downloaded a demo for, and soon after bought, Tetris Effect Connected on VR. On the one hand, we had the latest open-world hero's adventure from an almost 40-year-old series, undergoing its latest transformation after so many such transformations in its lifetime. On the other hand, the latest puzzle iteration from an almost 40-year-old series, still the same game as when it was first developed, but now leaning harder into the flow-inducing and art piece elements. And for about seven days straight, I spent almost all of my waking, non-working hours on one of these two games. They are each difficult in their own right. Tears of the Kingdom has laid me out from its lowliest monsters to its grandest bosses, but I kept coming back. Tetris Effect challenged my usual laid-back approach to the puzzle, forcing me to adapt and improve so I could beat each stage and see everything that the game had to offer. Despite these, and because of them, I have spent a great deal of time in both game worlds, and it wasn't all for the pretty pictures or the ongoing story. There were three things that I loved in these two games, and they made for one very good, very relaxing week. Flow is one of my favorite concepts. At its core, flow is the scientific explanation for being in the zone. Whenever a person is fully immersed in focus, involvement, and the enjoyment of an activity, they experience a flow state. Jean Nakamura and Mihai Csikszentmihalyi list six core factors of experiencing flow. One, an intense concentration on the present moment. Two, merging action and awareness. Three, a loss of reflective self-consciousness. Four, a sense of personal control over the activity. Five, subjective temporal distortion. And six, feeling the activity in question is intrinsically rewarding. Any number of activities can fulfill any of those factors, but when you have all six going at once, that's how you get into flow. I felt it myself in any number of games in the past. Sunless Skies, Resident Evil Village, Frostpunk, Mass Effect, Return of the Obra Dinn, Tunic, Hades, and so many others. It's the right amount of engaging, challenging, and attainable that kept me going back time after time. Tears of the Kingdom drew me back into Hyrule narratively, picking up basically where Breath of the Wild left off, but it kept me playing through its gameplay loop. Exploration and discovery. I wasn't thinking of me, I was too engrossed in the experience. On several of the nights that I played, I would go so long as to lose sleep for work the next day. Time would fly while I wandered around Hyrule, hours in what felt like minutes. I got to choose where to go, explore at my own pace in whatever direction I wanted. And as with all video games I enjoy, it was autotelic. I enjoyed it for its own sake. Progress and discovery changed no part of my actual life, but it felt fulfilling nonetheless. When I was in Hyrule, I was in Hyrule, and nothing short of exhaustion was going to keep me away. As with its predecessor, Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom was at its strongest when I was just wandering. Objective markers were far away, and I could just meander around the fields, mountains, and deserts in curiosity along the way. I fell into a flow state by just having the freedom to explore a wide open world. The plot would always be on the other side of my adventuring. But where you fall into a flow state with tears, Tetris Effect has you rise to meet it. The point of any Tetris title is simple. Using different tetrominoes, shapes consisting of four squares, dropping from the top of a vertical game board, create entire rows of blocks at the bottom to clear away space on the board. Go for as long as you can, until the inevitable game over. The rub is that the game gets faster the longer you play around. You can start at a relaxing pace where the blocks don't drop so much as you drag them down, but the longer you play, the faster the blocks start dropping, the faster you have to think and act in order to stay in the game. It's a natural progression too. As you get used to playing at speed 4, for example, ramping up to speed 5 feels natural. Tetris gradually shifts its challenge upward, but in a way that takes us with almost seamlessly in a perfect, positive trajectory that Flo describes. Tetris Effect goes a step further with the playfields, no longer just a static grid with jaunty Russian ballads on which to drop Tetrominos. 
the play fields are themed both visually and musically. In the player's periphery, the background is in a state of change and adaptation keeping in line with the beat of the soundtrack and your own movements on the board. Your adjustments of the tetrominoes, whether side to side or rotational, elicit some kind of feature in the soundtrack. A beat, a riff, a vocal punch, all in real time, all to pull you further into a state of full immersion and concentration on the task at hand, simple and bound to end as it is. Soon, your movements are complementing the overarching music. You are a part of the music. The music is a part of you, and you are fully in the zone, until neither your brain nor your reflexes can keep up with the falling pieces. Flow manifested in different ways between both titles. It was, as it always has been, a joy to find myself getting lost in it. Every action has consequences and the potential for change, but that dichotomy of change and consequence manifests differently between these two games. Sticking with Tetris for a bit longer, remember how the speed and difficulty ramps up the longer you play around. In Tetris Effect, the progression is more varied. Ritual drums beat faster, the jellyfish dance more quickly, the background perspective zooms further and further out. The world, as it is, and its soundscape both change as you play. Tempos increase and decrease, new motifs are introduced. The dynamic changes around you, providing a sense of progression as your score increases and the speed of play fluctuates. But within the player, there's the consequence of improvement. Tetris is a game that is easy to pick up, but can constantly be improved upon. The more you play, the more you can implicitly recognize where pieces will fit, the more you can keep up with the increasing speeds. The player is changing on a more long-term scale than the short-term game-to-game changes in music and aesthetic. Tears of the Kingdom takes a more narrative approach to change and consequence. Early game spoilers abound, but the short version is, bad things happen and now the world is reeling. Again. The four main regions are beset with unnatural phenomena and circumstances like blizzards or sludge rain that are negatively impacting the lifestyles of their various inhabitants. When players roll up, everyone is in triage mode, the settlement is in shambles, and things are dire. But through some heroics, the day is saved, and one by one, the settlement is returned to normalcy, other more overarching issues notwithstanding. Here, players get to see and experience the improvement of the world through their actions. In previous titles, Link often goes on similar regional jaunts to save various peoples and their settlements, but in completing their various dungeons, the regions often remained desolate or unchanged. There was no sense of change until the end credits. Here, players get to see and experience the improvement of the world through their actions. There's a sense of consequence to players' actions. The world changes because of what they do. There is a duality of calm between these two games, manifesting differently simply for how the games lead you to it. Tears of the Kingdom elicits calm on the one hand because, if you're like me, you've wandered around this Hyrule once before. The landmarks and settlements are where you left them in Breath of the Wild, but now peppered with the changes of a few years' time and the ongoing conflict. It is familiar, but different, and there is never a reason for me to make a beeline through the kingdom. The calm comes with the freedom to approach the game any way I want. I can wander at my own pace, I can build and salvage from the world around me, I could ignore the main quest entirely, I can explore, I can help people, I can do all of that in whatever order I like. I can do whatever I want and still get the most out of the game. Time only feels like it passes so quickly because I am so engaged and so calmed by this adventure. As I write this, and even as I purchased Tetris Effect, there was a Game Boy copy of Tetris sitting no less than three feet from where I confirmed payment. So why shell out extra for this shiny new iteration? At its core, it's still the same game. Drop to Tetrominoes, clear lines, maximize score. On the one hand, is the strength of the title aside from its predecessors? Tetris Effect made me concentrate differently than I have in previous games of Tetris. It reacted to me, it synced with me, it connected with me. 
that feeling of oneness, of calm connectedness with the experience was worth the price of admission alone, and has been savored every moment that I remain aware of it. And on the other side is what I'm calling the post-game breath. Without fail, after every round in Tetris Effect, I find myself sinking into my chair and just having a really good deep breath in. Have you ever had that breath where it feels like the air just goes deeper into your system? It doesn't happen all the time, but when it does and when you recognize it, it hits differently. That's my Tetris effect, getting so invested and lost in the game that for a moment, I am fully unaware of myself. Breathing becomes autonomic. I'm still doing it even if I'm not aware of it. And when I finally return after the inevitable game over, I am aware of my body again. And that breath brings me back in. It reminds me of the calm that I experienced and the calm that I am still in the throes of. At the end of that good week, I had gone through the main story in Tears of the Kingdom on my terms. I had an adventure of my own making. I'd experienced the entire journey in Tetris Effect and have come back for its marathon modes, never having to chase too long to experience that connection between game and player. As a player, one of the best things that we can experience is that the actions we take in-game have consequences throughout the game. One of the greatest feelings we can have in this world is a sense of calm. One of the most satisfying sensations is losing track of time for how invested we are in what we are doing. That week went by in a blur, but it went by in a very calm blur. And it still feels like progress has been made, whether in the ongoing saga of Hyrule, in my still low-tier skills in Tetris, or just in my appreciation for how games can make me feel.